Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I wanted to come correct for you guys, which is why I'm currently wearing a blazer. But you know what? I'm going to take it off because it's a bit restrictive and I'm going to get comfortable because what we're going to be talking about is extremely important and I want to make you guys feel as comfortable as possible. And I want to be as comfortable as possible. My name is Sadia. Welcome. Don't hesitate to support me by subscribing, liking this video if you enjoy it, like, comment, and subscribe. I hate when YouTubers say that, by the way, because <laughs> it's just like, I haven't even watched the video yet. Like, why are you asking me to subscribe and like, I don't even know what you're going to say. But I feel like if I just say that and take that out of the way as soon as possible, then you'll be reminded. And when YouTube Studio sends me these information on how to grow my channel, they tell me to do this so what do you want from me i want you to like comment and subscribe give me a break <laughs> i think that's funny but anyways what i'm about to talk about is very important to me and i feel like it's very important for us to understand this whole phenomenon from my perspective one because I have a very unique perspective on this particular matter and I feel like it's one that could help us out as a community of people with a similar hue to our skin because honestly outside of the cultural identity that people of the same hue of my skin have sometimes i just have to wonder like where is the mental uh, similarities within this group of people because just the way they behave the things they say and the way they behave to information makes me wonder sometimes like what is going on so what i'm talking about is the comment that monique made about bonnets let's start with what is the meaning of a bonnet and what is a bonnet used for so according to the googler black women have worn sleep bonnets and head wraps to protect their hair and make natural hairstyles last longer for many, it's a part of their nightly routine, experts say. I'm going to tell you my understanding of what a bonnet is and what it's used for. So a bonnet in the African American, the African diaspora is used as a piece of material lined with elastic to protect your hairstyle for sleeping to protect your hair from breakage from dehydration while you sleep it's something that we wear to bed it's something that we wear in the house yeah <laughs> That's the basis of what a bonnet is used for. Like it's used inside your home as a means for you to protect either your natural hair from breakage to retain moisture or used to protect a hairstyle, whether you're wearing a wig or any like hairstyle that you're trying to protect while you sleep. That's what a bonnet is used for, right? What a bonnet is not used for is anything outside of that anything outside of what's described as its use it's not used for it is used as a protective gear for hair whilst one sleeps that is what a bonnet is used for now before i go into what monique said about bonnets as regards to people of my same complexion as it relates to african-american people i must give you a history of her image in the public's eye so monique is a comedian and an actress she was one of the main characters in the show the parkers the parkers was from august 1999 to may of 2004 it was a very successful show she was the one she was the main character really um the parkers was her and her daughter in their relationship in going to college blah 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 if you don't know about the parkers just it's on netflix it was a very successful african-american sitcom if you will 
and after the success of that she did lots of cameos in other shows I'm not sure if there was any movie before the movie Precious but one of her major breakout roles was Precious the movie where she did a phenomenal job at playing Precious's mother. There was a lot of calamities and drama surrounding her not wanting to promote the movie or not wanting to do that without pay. Um, there was a lot of drama surrounding her having feuds with Tyler Perry and Oprah over the promotional leg of the movie and so I feel like Tyler Perry as well as Oprah are black American treasures. They're not gods. I love both of them. Apparently if you fuck with them, you fuck with the whole African American community and no one will hear any sides. It's their right. Nobody else is right. Whatever. I don't know the situation but that's the vibe that I got and I just didn't really felt like anybody was thinking for themselves. It was a collective thought that nobody really broke down critically to have a critical thought of their own. But I digress. I'm not going to go too deep into that but I can tell you that that whole scenario, that whole situation really tainted Monique's reputation and she was then blacklisted um, from Hollywood because of that whole situation. Whatever that was, I don't really know every single detail and I don't want to give details on that. I can only tell you how I felt about the situation and how it made me feel as a dark skin, Afrocentric brown woman, brown Caribbean woman. It did not make me feel good. There were so many different legs to the story. I did not feel well how this woman was being treated based on no deep research on every aspect and fact of the situation. I just felt like a collective opinion was gathered and everybody was jumping onto that boat and rowing it to the middle of the ocean. That's really how I felt. And it was a little bit overwhelming for me, so I really did not take it on. Anyways, moving forward, Monique said some comments about black women wearing bonnets in public. Now remember what I said about bonnets, what they're used for. She also mentioned something about pajamas and do I really need to go into what pajamas mean and how they're used and what they're supposed to be used for? I really don't think I need to but I'm going to watch the video with you guys and then I'm going to we're going to comment on it okay guys so I know I said I was going to watch the video and then comment on it but actually this video was meant to be a five minute video and it's already like very long so I'm going to link the video below so that you can watch the full length video on your own time and then come back to this video once you've watched it or watch it after you've watched this video so that you can have a full scope of what's going on and what I'm actually talking about. Thank you so much. How I feel about what she said. I feel like she prefaced the message correctly by stating that she's coming from a place of love and throughout the entire message it maintained that tone of I am coming from a place of love I'm seeing as I'm seeing what you're doing I'm trying to share with you some useful information um, if you want it here it is if you call me auntie this is the message that I'm call that I'm giving to you. If, even if you don't call me auntie, um, here I, I think it's useful uh, information. I'm seeing this and I'm feeling this way and I'm sharing this with you because I love you and I feel like this will be of use to you. That is the feeling that I get from what she's saying. Her body language says the same message, her tone says the same message, how I'm feeling about her spirit and her aura is saying the same message. I don't feel any ill will in this messaging. I don't feel anything of I'm better than you. I don't feel anything malicious. 
I don't feel anything negatively prideful and when I say negatively prideful I mean like the same notion of uh, like I'm better than you I'm showing up better than you and you're doing this and I'm not and, and I'm not doing this I, I don't feel that there's no arrogance behind the message that she's sending it's very straightforward it's very clear and I can feel in my spirit that it's coming from a place of love it's coming from a place of concern and it's also coming from a place of upliftment of trying to educate and inform and uplift a group of people there's nothing malicious that i can detect from this messaging that she said so i i just don't understand what the mix-up is what the agenda of everybody else is i feel very saddened by how this messaging has taken on a whole new meaning to people who want to have a whole new agenda for someone and i understand that when powerful people dismiss someone beneath them a subordinate especially if those powerful people are commonly people who have done good or have done tremendous things in their own lives as well as showcasing their efforts for a whole community we want to lift those people up and we want to believe everything they say but we also have to remember that those people are humans and they're not always right they're not always doing good just like none of us is ever always doing good sometimes we're, we're all up to things that's just what it is and I feel uplifted by her message I feel that it was a very important message to say I feel like anybody who this message would apply to if they're of thinking sound mind they would hear the message and grab it or grab aspect of it that applies to them and leave the rest I feel like one of the things that's wrong with people within the black or the african-american community is that they don't know how to take the value from something and leave the rest there's a saying that we say back home in jamaica that um, if the cap fits you wear it if the cap fits wear it if it doesn't apply to you then move on take the value from what is being said and leave everything else alone when she said when she mentioned have some pride in yourself and the way that you carry yourself and the way that you're representing your family there was nothing that was malicious about that I felt nothing mean it was not arrogant it was not uh, demeaning I felt nothing of the sort let me just say this I feel like if the message was coming from any one of these people who have a problem with this messaging grandmothers they would not have a problem with it they would humble themselves and they would say yes grandma if the messaging was coming from their grandmothers I'm telling you if the message was coming from their grandmothers they would not have a problem with this message but because it's coming from a woman who has had previous history and bad publicity within the public's eye they feel like it's important for them to piggy off that history and ride this woman down into the ground and that's where we're just not going to have this we're not going to do this to black women any longer you cannot say that you support women and you support black women and you support your community but whenever you have the chance whenever you get the opportunity to ride someone down into the ground to jump on someone's back and beat them like a horse over the head continuously and consistently whenever that opportunity comes up you jump on it and you do it and you see no problem with it and what it screams to me is one jealousy you have a problem that the message came from somebody you didn't expect it to come from because she has had bad publicity and bad imagery and you can feel in the atmosphere that people have been wanting this woman to die or to be dismissed forever and the funny thing about it is that she's given so much to the community and she's given so much to black culture in America she's given herself um, her art her energy she's a lifted people she's made people laugh she's she's given you guys joy and this is how you treat your mother 
this is how you treat your aunt, this is how you treat your grandma, this is how you treat your sister, this is how you treat your friend, this is how you treat black women, and not just black women, dark skinned black women. This is what you do, this is how you behave. I'm appalled, I am appalled, I'm disgusted. It really breaks my heart and I feel like throwing up and I'm trying my very best not to cry right now but it's so sad. It's giving me fuck Marcus Garvey, it's giving me fuck you Malcolm X, it's giving me Muhammad Ali can go fuck himself. That's the vibe it's giving me because when influential people come to us with information, especially when they're not the people that we expect to get this information from, especially when they're not meek people, they're not diluted people, they have strong personalities and their their speech is very uh, strong and they have a thing about them that that charges you to either listen and you either like that or you hate that they're not mild people and I find that African Americans oftentimes like mildness they talk a lot about how white people don't like to season their food but in spirit we're mild we have no strength to to receive information and that is a problem so back to what i was saying we have a problem with just taking the value from information and run with it the fact of the matter is that a bonnet is not something that you usually wear outside pajamas aren't something that you usually wear outside if you're gonna wear your pajamas outside let us not even think about it as pajamas if you're gonna wear your bonnet outside, let us not even think about it as bonnets. Like, you have to be innovative in the way that you carry yourself because you are representing yourself, one. You are representing your family and you're representing a whole community. I didn't create this type of reality for us. This has been the reality for us for hundreds of years. As a community, as a collective, we have to be aware of that. We have to be aware that it exists and act accordingly. We have to act according to what we know, not otherwise. We know something to be true. We know people are always looking at us. We know people hold us to a different standard. Let us act according to that. Not allow it to burden us and prison us, but let's act according to what we know. Nothing in the messaging that Monique said made me feel less than and it is a fact I I do not wear my bonnet outside the furthest I would wear my bonnet to is my car but to be out in public wearing a bonnet it's not something that I do I don't wear my pajamas out in public the furthest I'll wear my pajamas to is my car you know there's certain things that you keep into the house there's certain things that are private and certain things that are sensitive and certain things that are more intimate is the word that i'm looking for that we we need to act according to that we don't need to take everything that's inside the home outside of the home you know things that are inside of the home needs to maintain its intimacy inside the home and i saw a comment from tanya tko that said oh monique was wearing a robe she made a comment like oh but you're wearing a robe this is also a problem that i find with a lot of african-american people is that they cannot stay on topic they cannot maintain the conversation in a straight line the conversation is not about what monique is wearing the conversation is about bonnets and wearing bonnets in public to the airport wearing your pajamas to the airport i understand that people want to be comfortable and they want to feel overly comfortable to be honest you know when you're at home that's where your comfortability is you know yeah you can be comfortable outside but wear appropriate clothes for outside to be comfortable outside because you're representing yourself that is just a fact you know it's not it's not hidden truth 
you know? If you want to be comfortable in the airport, if you want to be comfortable on a plane, wear a tracksuit. Make your headscarf stylish or remotely presentable, you know? As African American people, we're so creative and we're so just innovative. We know how to turn freaking chicken back into curry deliciousness. You can be creative. Use your creativity to make yourself comfortable in these public spaces so that we're not letting ourselves go you know nobody's saying and she even in the message she even said hey i'm not saying wear a full face of makeup i'm not saying wear a full lace wig all i'm saying is this is inappropriate that's all i'm saying is that this is inappropriate what is wrong with what she said please somebody please somebody please tell me what is wrong with the messaging because I personally didn't find anything wrong with this messaging I, I really didn't black America's response to Monique was just blase blase it was very disruptive with all the aggressive attacking responses. I saw a lot of women doing the opposite of what Monique said as if it was going to hurt her. It's not hurting her. It's hurting you guys. You know, it, she is fine. When she leaves her house, she's not going outside in a bonnet. You know, she never said, oh, don't ever wear your bonnet. She says, don't wear your bonnet in public. She never says, don't film in your bonnet. She says don't wear your bonnet to the airport she never says don't film in your pajamas she says don't wear your pajamas to the airport can are you listening are you hearing are you deaf do you need hearing aid because there is nothing that this woman said that was of ill will that was mean that was malicious nothing you guys wanted to find a problem so that you can come on here onto the internet and attack a decent woman but you know what you're not going to do it you're not going to do it on my watch you're not going to do it today you're not going to do it tomorrow you're going to stop here because it screams jealousy it screams hating it screams self-hate it screams hating a black woman. It screams hating on your own people for no good reason. That's what it's screaming. It screams, fuck you, Marcus Garvey. It screams, Malcolm X can just suck my dick. It's screaming, Muhammad Ali can just fuck off. But we, we can take Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. because at least he was nice and he did not, he did, he never said, he said that we should always be nice to white people and we sh there's no violence he he was no violence we need to learn where we came from we didn't come from mildness we didn't come from people who gave a mild opinion we don't come from politically correct uh mess we come from people who gave truth who were direct who was firm who were strong that's where we come from you guys have forgotten where you come from but i haven't okay nothing that this woman said was mean malicious untrue it is the truth she saw something and she felt the need to inform you guys this woman is up here okay she's been there she's seen it all she didn't have to come on here and said anything to you guys but she did and what you did was you turn it around and you created a narrative that would feed your jealousy and feed your maliciousness and feed your clout so that you could piggyback off this black woman and it's it, we need to stop doing that as a community this is where it needs to stop it needs to stop here it really needs to stop here when we behave this way towards women coming forward having a different of opinion having a different way of delivering messages which nothing was disrespectful in what she said nothing was malicious when you guys respond the way that you respond it says to me that there's a bit of fraudulence there you know because on one end of the stick 
we cannot say oh yeah we are queens and we respect black women and we need to lift up the black women we want truth and we want this and we want that when there is a energy of hatred and jealousy by the same black women who claim that they're queens and support black women and support black businesses but you're all frauds you're all frauds because when it comes to the truth right when the truth comes to you and it's your chance to grab at the value and advance yourselves you would rather to persecute the messenger rather than to see your part in why the message was sent in the first place the fact is that she's up there she's trying to lift you up and that's how you behave that's how you behave every time i see this behavior time and time again with my interactions on tiktok twitter and social media it's just that there is this thing that you guys have going on where you knock the messenger that comes with the truth and not just the truth the unfiltered truth but i have a message for you and i want to add that this is the kind of behavior that is the reason why a mass majority of people within the african-american community remain as they are and god is going to smite you for this these are not my words god sees and knows and he will smite you for persecuting his messengers and don't don't try to get too philosophical about it and don't even question whether that message that she sent was from god don't even try it don't even go for me right now because i'm not playing with none of you god will smite you for battering the messengers of information that he sends to you so be careful and be warned be careful and be warned because he has sent many and it is because the foundation let me say something you see when a people are together and strong together nothing outside of those people can come in and dismantle them no one can dismantle a group that is strong and mighty a group that looks out for one another when there's values that are strong when there is a values that form the foundation of a group of people are the same and they're mighty and they're strong together nothing can dismantle you not nobody from outside can come in and just disrupt your everything so just think about that for uh, a moment and, and think for yourself while you're thinking about that don't think about what somebody else thinks about that think for yourself so don't kill the messenger because the message is hard for you to hear or you would have preferred the message to come from someone else don't kill the messenger on those terms take the value from the information and move the fuck on it's just that simple what we're not going to be out here doing is dogging black women on the internet for everybody else to see as a community how does that look on you guys how do you feel about yourselves you're dogging someone around all around social media and everybody outside of that community is seeing you how does it make you feel you feel good about yourself i hope you do and i really hope you sleep well at night time what you're doing is dogging monique to make her look bad and to continue to persecute her and continue a narrative that diminishes her truth and diminishes her integrity and just diminishes her authority and the authority of a black woman so what you are doing to her you are ultimately doing to yourself the persecution continuing that malicious narrative as if a dark-skinned black woman is always coming after you is always saying something mean and rude to you is always addressing you beneath your station you are continuing that narrative not her you're using her as a model to continue that narrative but it is you who are doing it and this is diminishing her truth and diminishing her integrity and diminishing her authority as a black woman but it's also doing the same 
for you. Whatever you do to her, you are doing to yourself. So be careful how you treat women out here, especially black women. And especially you women who claim, oh, black women are queens, treat us like queens. If the queen says something, you listen. If you don't agree with it, you sit at your kitchen table and you talk about what you agree with and you talk about what you don't agree with, but you don't publicly, publicly speak ill of the queen, do you? Because oftentimes if you speak publicly ill of a queen, you're dead the next day right you can listen to beyonce but you can't listen to monique you'll fight for beyonce but you can't fight for monique what makes these women different tell me yeah of course their talents are different but they're both black women one's light skin and one's dark skin what makes these women different both these women have shared their talents with you guys they've uplifted you guys they've comforted you in times when you needed laughter or joy or boldness and vigor both these women have given back to our community with themselves, using themselves as tools, as well as using their God-given talents. Both need to be respected, both need to be listened to. Both are queens in their own rights. I'm upset, I'm disgusted with this behavior. I, I'm appalled at the way that you guys have behaved in this scenario and i feel sorry for you and if it is that you need a hug today i would give you a hug it'll take me a little bit to adjust to that but i i would give you a hug because you need it but i also wanna <laughs> so in conclusion i want to give you guys some alternatives to wearing your bonnets out in public Now, if you do a show that's called Bonnet Chronicles, obviously this woman was not talking about you because your show is Bonnet Chronicles and you obviously don't wear your bonnet out in public. You see how we need to stay on topic? You see how we need to think in a straight line? You see how we're all over the place as a people? We need to come back and centralize ideas and thoughts and be the intellects and the scholars of this time like we were back then. But I digress. I'm going to give you guys some alternatives to bonnets and some alternatives to pajamas so that you guys can have choices so that you think twice about it when you go out in public in public places with your physical bodies not while you're filming at home in your home your sacred space but when you're out in public in public places what monique was referring to was being out in public in public places wearing your bonnets and your pajamas she's she never referred to anything about filming in your bonnets at home in your sacred space she never mentioned anything about not wearing pajamas in your videos at home in your sacred spaces let's get it together and stay on topic Stay within the context of the conversation with the contents that are provided for us to make critical thinking opinions on, okay? L let's try to do that because that is missing. When the opportunity comes for us to think critically for ourselves, when the opportunity comes, we just let it sit there and it just evaporates like water vapor. Like, Black America, get it together, please, please. African American, people so beautiful, people so precious to God, people so creative and smart and wise. Please use these gifts in your everyday lives. Please, I beg of you. Let us come to our senses and uplift black women in every aspect of their lives, in all the shades 
possible and not ever ever pull them down. Let us not do that to our own sisters and mothers and friends and aunts and nieces and cousins. Let us not do that to our in-laws. Stand strong and push on with some integrity and pride in who you are as a person and some self-respect that you will think twice before you disrespect someone else. It is important for you to understand this. We are one, only united. We are many as we fall. If we can stand united, being united, not acting as if we're united, if we can stand strong within our own values, our own value system, then nothing can dismantle us. No one and will forever and continuously grow strong as a community and as a... But if we continue to diminish the authority and the integrity of our own women, our own women, or elderly women who come to us with love or women who actually have portals between their legs that have brought living life forces into this world if we continue to do this to our women we will continue to be the footstool of this planet so Live well, smile, take care of your hair, think twice before you go outside, and wash your face, moisturize yourself, put in just a little bit of effort and see how it makes you feel. You feeling cold at the, the airport? Put on a hoodie, wear a jacket. One love. I love you guys. Bye.